Hey guys, I am back for part two of my book haul for, did I even say it was for July in the last video? Oh God, did I say that? I don't think I said that. This is July. Did I? I don't, I don't remember. It's going to be in the title anyways. So this is part two of my July book haul where Lindsay went crazy because of the pandemic and bought way too many books and had to break this video in half. So this is the second half, which is basically just the romance books because this is a thing and I've become addicted. So I'm still blaming Shay. She doesn't care. She's quite happy. She, she, I'm blaming her. So I am going to try and break these up by obviously, did I buy all of these? Okay, no, these two, okay. So, good God. Uh, so basically what happened is I'm starting bec to become a little bit braver about going out again and I've started going back out to my local Books A Million. I've gone like twice so far. Um, I did also go to the Barnes and Nobles, which I've never, well I've been to once before, but I don't usually go to because it's kind of further out of the way. But I ended up having to go in that location to go to a doctor's appointment, which I don't usually have to go to. So because I was out there and I did not realize that the Trader Joe's I was going to because my dad wanted bread <laughs> was right near the Barnes and Nobles. So of course I went in and of course I bought books. So um, these first two are books I just ended up getting off of Amazon. A lot of these are from the bookstore, however, so I'll try and separate which is from which. Um, the first one is The Simple Wild. This one was off of Amazon. Um, this one I've actually started buddy reading, so you can see the tabbies, because we read about 50 pages a day with Shay, my buddy reading bud. This was actually one that was on her wish list, and I ended up getting it for her birthday. And then um, I actually had heard a lot of people talk about this as like a lot of people's like favorite romances, so I was like, well, dang. I'll get it for Shay and I'll get it for myself and we can buddy read it together for uh, this summer fling. So that's what we're doing. So this is basically about a girl who has lived in Toronto her whole life. Um, her parents, she has never seen her dad. Her, she, her mom left her dad when she was like two. So she has like a stepdad and her mom and everything's fine. And then she basically gets a call from her a dad's lady friend basically saying that um, he his days are numbered and he's he's well I don't think it says it on the back but it's like the beginning pages he has cancer so is there any way that she could at least come and finally meet her father before you know he's gone so it is a basically and I've only read like the first 50 pages so it's basically her going to Alaska having to deal with like the great outdoors as a city girl which I'm looking forward to because this girl is very city, <laughs> very city. So it's hilarious. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to her like dealing with Alaska. And of course there's a guy and we think he's, you know, we assume he's going to be the guy that she falls in love with and you know, it's romance, but it's super cute so far. I'm enjoying it from the 50 pages I've read. The next one that I got was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I know everyone's talked about this one. Everyone says that Talia Hibbert is wonderful. Um, and I really wanted to try this one. I am reading this one specifically for a couple of the prompts for the summer fling. So this will be one of my reading challenges for that readathon. Um, but she is basically Chloe is a chronically ill computer geek with a goal, a plan, and a list. And then she almost, like, kind of, after almost, but not quite dying, she comes up with seven um, things that she wants to do to help herself, like, get a life, because she's kind of stuck in a right rut. And one of them is, you know, basically to move out, um, get drunk, and enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, have meaningless, live the early enjoyable sex, travel the world with nothing but a handbag, and do something bad. And it's basically her trying to enlist someone who has done is kind of a bad boy I guess to do those kinds of things so she enlists her friend Red to help her kind of rebel essentially and it sounds like it's a lot of fun I'm definitely looking forward to reading it this month so there is that one um, the next this book is the other book that I ended up getting at Target 
So this is my very first Nicholas Sparks book. So it's The Rescue. Um, I... Like, the funny thing is, is, like, I always kind of joked about romance, never thinking that I... So, basically, I read romance when I was younger, like, 15, 16, a lot. And then I kind of fell out of it, and I th kind of thought it was cheesy. And my sister and I always made jokes that, like, you know, like, any of those, like, movies where, like, someone has a chronic illness, and then, you know, they... they or they, like, they fall in love, but the one person has a chronic illness, and, of course, it's sad because the person dies at the end. It's like a Nicholas Sparks film. So I always thought it was kind of funny that I ended up with Nicholas Sparks. But this is basically, in the, ra in the face of raging fires and deadly accidents, volunteer firefighter Taylor feels compelled to take terrifying risks to save lives. But there's one leaf of faith Taylor can never bring himself to make. He can't fall in love. For all of his adult years, he has sought out women who need to be rescued, women who leave him as soon as the crisis is over, and the relationship starts to become truly intimate. So there is a single mom, which frankly, this is, this is me, I'm like so enjoying, like, I love books that have like kids in it. I don't want kids, but I love books that have kids in them. So this one is a, in his small southern town, I also love small town. This is like, you'll become, you'll be aware when you look through these of all these small town, small town things. Um, a single mother, her car slits off the road. She has a four-year-old son with learning disabilities and Taylor finds her unconscious, but then doesn't find Kyle. And then it's like a race of what happened to Kyle. So it's kind of like thriller slash romance. And I'm like all for that. So there is that one. Uh, the next one I got. Yeah, so this was a thing. Um, these were from, I think, like, two different book hauls. Uh, Jill Chavez is a thing that I apparently just decided I wanted to read. I know Shay had read The Lemon Sisters, so that was one of the reasons that I ended up grabbing that one. And this one is just about, I mean, it's about two sisters who, um, Brooke has always learned to live the life she wanted, um, she learns to have adventures and mistakes included, something that her perfect sister Mindy never does. But then Mindy shows up, uh, throws a breakdown with the three kids in tow, and Brooke is shocked. And Brooke basically agrees to trade places, taking the kids back, and like basically making sure their life is not uprooted so that Mindy can kind of like get herself together. And there is that. So it'll be interesting and it looks it looks good. Shay really liked it. Um, the other three I ended up basically buying on the exact same Barnes & Noble Hall. No, not Barnes but Books A Million Hall. So there is Almost Friends which is basically another oh, it's, it's Wildstone. Okay, Wildstone. Is that also someone else? I think this is another one of in the same series as some of the others. I need to kind of figure out what's in what series. Uh, Peter is about as tough Piper, who words. She has to be. She raised her siblings, and they finally flew the coop. All she has to do is finish up fixing the leg helps. Her grandparents left her in salad, and then she's free. But then a storm hits, and she runs into dark brooding Camden. There are sparks there, one that shocks her, surprising her further. Her sister and her brother returns, each of them keeping their own secrets. The smart move would be ignore them. But Cam unleashes emotions deep inside Piper that she can't deny, making her yearn for something she doesn't understand. And her siblings, well, they need her. So, the siblings, family. I'm, like, really, like, I'm finding as I'm going through these, like, family and kids and things like that are, like, playing, like, this big part in what I want to read. Um, so the other one I got is Instant Gratification, which, not gonna lie, the cat helped the cover on that one. Uh, there was a time when Emma Sinclair wanted to challenge herself, sharpen her medical skills by plunging into the ruthless pace of New York City's ER. But she's younger. But she was younger then. Now she's older, and she figured she would jump at the chance to run her father's clinic for a summer in Sierra Nevada. Here she treats bee stings, stomach flus, and the occasional pet cat. She also contends with patients like Stone, laid back and well aware of his good looks, but irritating beyond belief. The man laughs at her, and Emma loathes him. <laughs> So it just sounds cute. It sounds like another small town. She moves back to the small town and animals and nurse and doctor. And it just sounded really cute. So I, inst I grabbed that one. And then Instant Attraction, which I'm guessing, are they in the same series? Maybe. It looks like they would be from the titles. But 
and number cruncher Katie has been a good girl all her life, and yet she's still fish out of water, still a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. So the real question is, can good karma be wished for? Because she's wishing, darn it. She's wishing hard. At wit's end and rock bottom, she stares at the night sky and falls asleep dreaming about a huge, twinkling, falling star and makes three wishes on the star. One, to experience a real-life adventure complete with amazing athletic feats and danger. Two, good sex. And three, to be along. Really, belong somewhere. Anywhere. And the next day, she reads an ad about a small, faraway mountain town named Wishful and a, a, and a company that needs a bookkeeper. So she moves, and it just sounds amazing. And she falls in love, probably, because it's romance. Okay, and the rest of the books are the uh, mass paperbacks. Um, the first three I ended up getting off of Amazon, and the other four I ended up getting from the bookstore again. So these are all, like, Shay helped me pick them out. I'll just gonna say that right here because I told her that I wanted to try. So I'm trying to branch out and figure out like kind of what my, my my preferred genre is for romance. So I'm kind of trying a bit at, I mean, not, ro yeah, romance. The oh, onesie. I just woke up, guys. So I'm trying to find like what is the ones that I'm interested in. So I told her I wanted to try and do like a suspense romance. So she recommended Deadly Obsession by April Hunt, which is a steel ops novel. And this is a basically um, a lifetime spent in and out of hospitals. Zoe is tired of playing it safe. She's ready to take charge of her own life and get out of her comfort zone, starting with a new job as a CSI agent. But when her childhood crush, Knox, gets pulled onto her case, Zoe needs to put her feelings for him aside, or more women will die at the hands of a serial killer preying on her hometown. So, suspense. Romance. It sounds cool. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the next one that I ended up getting were two, two of them that were, like, paranormal. So the first one is Faith Hunter, Blood of the Earth, which is a Soulwood novel. Um, this one is when Nell met Skinwalker Jane, she was almost alone in the world, exiled by both choice and fear from the cult she had been raised in, defending herself with magic she drew from her deep connection to the forest that surrounds her. Now Jane has referred Neil to Psych Lead, a homeland security agency policing paranormals. Yeah, paranormal. And Agent Rick has shown up at Nell's doorstep asking for her help. Local girls are missing, and Rick fears they may be in the hands of a paranormal-hating terrorist group. I'm all for it. I love paranormal. Just attach the romance, and we're cool. And then the last one, which I'm actually in the middle of right now, is uh, my first Christine Feehan book. I know Shay loves her. She reads a lot of her books. So I kind of went through her website, looked at all of her... Um, different series and picks, picked the one that sounded the most interesting to me, which is the Ghost, the Ghost Walker series, with, and this is the first one. So this is about basically, um, it's, it's ghosts so much got in like an X-Men twist to it, which I love because I like grew up watching X-Men like crazy. So this is basically like a scientist and there's a scientist who's been doing experiments to create like psychically enhanced like military guys. And um, he enlists his daughter, Lily, to assist with him because this basically, they're, they're, um, the experiments he did enhance the psychic abilities of the squad, transforming their natural telekinetic powers into a unique military weapon. But then something is going wrong, and the men are dying, and the captain of the men is basically like, we need to get the freak out of here because my guys keep dying because you guys are, you scientists are freaking killing my people. So it, it's really good so far. I definitely enjoy it. Um, I, I love the psych, psychological aspect of it. I like the fact that they all have like powers. It's really, I'm looking forward to like getting the rest in the series because basically you've got like all the men and I'm assuming that all the men in the, um, in his like troop, so to speak, are going to be like the main characters in the rest of the books and it's going to be like them finding their someone because all of them have like kind of special characteristics so like one can like command animals and obviously one of them like can dream walk and it's really cool so far I'm really enjoying it so I need to I think I'm going to try and bang through that this weekend if possible and the next four I ended up all getting from 
either Books in a Million or Barnes and Noble, I can't remember exactly. Uh, this one looked interesting, I just picked it up and it sounded neat, so it's called White Out. In a place this remote, there's nowhere left to run. With a storm coming and a killer on the loose, every step could be their last. Angel is finally ready to leave Antarctica for a second chance at life. But on what's meant to be her last day, the remote research station she's been called home is attacked. Hunted and scared, she and irritatingly gorgeous ge uh, geologist Ford barely make it out with their lives, only to realize in the place this remote, there's nowhere left to run. So it's definitely like suspense romance, and I'm like all there for it. Eh, you can see them. Meh. Uh, the next one I got is actually one that um, I bought because I remembered Debbie Mason was one that Shay liked reading, so I ended up grabbing one of her books that sounded the most interesting to me. And actually, Shay's read this one, and she said it's really cute, so it's Primrose Lane. And this is Olivia has finally gotten her life back together. She's left her painful past behind, starting over in Harmony Harbor, and becomes the town's most sought-after event planner. <laughs> But her past catches up with her when Olivia learns that she's now guardian of her ex's younger daughter. Do I? Children. I, I don't know. It's, it's a thing. And then the last two I got, which I've actually mentioned the first book before, so I fact that I saw these in the bookstore, I picked them up, is the second and third volume of the Frozen Hearts novel, which is Arctic Sun and Arctic Wild. These are some more, it, this is, this was my excitement because I finally found a romance novel that was like a male-male romance novel. So it is the next two in the series. One is about a hotshot attorney who decides to take a vacation when his plane suddenly plunges into the Alaskan wilderness. He finds himself stranded and injured. And... So there's that one. And then the other one is a ex-military mountain man, Griff. Keeps from falling into his old habits. He's fought too hard for his sobriety to lose control now. However, his gig as a wildlife guide presents a new kinds of temptation in super, in super hot supermodel river. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a fun one. So that is the second half of my book haul for July. This is the romance half. I'm gonna try and slow down in um, August. I already still have like three or four books already because I keep buying more romance again because it's a thing. Um, and I'm also next weekend for the first time going to go visit my cousins who I haven't seen since March because pandemic. And we're probably, because this is us and I still can't say no to a bookstore right now, as long as I'm wearing a mask, wear a mask, kids. Um, so we're probably going to go to a couple bookstores and I'll probably get some more romance novels. I'm going to look for more Christine Feehan. Um, I'm going to see what other Jill Chavez ones they have. There's a couple others I'm going to try and see if I can find. So, or just pick up random ones. We'll see what happens. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed part two of my book haul. I'll see you guys later for the next video. Everyone have a very good rest of the day. Everyone stay safe. Bye.